we had earlier attended a memorial service in honor of Chief Ide, who, as I'm sure you know, is one of the very prominent sons of our country and, of course, of Delta State. Your Royal Majesty, it is a very special pleasure to be here. First, uh, because I have not had an opportunity to visit since Your Royal Majesty ascended to the throne of your fathers. Uh, although we've had occasion to meet, but I'm happy to be able to come today to formally congratulate you and, uh, and, and also uh, to pray that uh, this ascension to the throne, which I know is ordained by the Almighty God, will be blessed with great fruit for this community and for our nation. Well, I also bring you the very warm greetings of uh, His Excellency the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohammed Buhari, who uh, thanks you again for your very kind visit and uh, for, the, um, for all of the uh, very kind and supportive statements that you made when you visited him a couple of weeks ago. The very important um, reason why I also have come is because, Your Royal Majesty, we are at a time in the history of our country when we must do certain things to improve things and also to point ourselves in the right direction. As you know, coming into office, we had uh, top of our agenda, as Mr. President stated, the economy, security, and governance, corruption, the fight against corruption. But we also recognize, especially with security, that very few administrations have been confronted with the plethora of security challenges that we have been confronted with. And frankly, you know, when you look at the shared number and range of those security challenges, it's evident that um, it, is, it was necessary to have a leader such as Muhammad Buhari to be able to even take on those challenges. But the role of the traditional council, the traditional rulership in our country is critical to security, absolutely critical. And I'm happy that um, this is something that Your Royal Majesty also not only recognizes, but accepts as a major function of the traditional rulership. But it's not, of course, in the arming or the military aspects it is more because we recognize that the traditional rulership of our country holds a moral place in the lives of our people and in the esteem of our people. And it is that moral place that we very frequently have to call upon in order to mediate some of the conflicts that give rise to the security challenges that we have. Your Majesty, we, we, for example, uh, the His Excellency, the Deputy Governor, and I have worked extensively on um, some of the conflicts in the oil producing communities that have led to a decline in oil production. And we did so, you know, uh, by going around to speak to various uh, communities. And we were here, uh, this was about three or so, or four years ago now. And Your Royal Majesty, we were able to achieve results just because the traditional rulership took it upon themselves to be front and center of mediating these disputes. So I think that this, uh, the times that we're in also call for that kind of intervention. And I respectfully urge Your Royal Majesty to take this on too, as a major task because just as has been mentioned, our country depends a great deal on oil production. 
and we want to see that security challenges, all theft and some of what we're seeing in the Delta and in many of our producing communities are swiftly brought to an end. The other point, Royal Majesty, is that I know that so much excitement has come from your, from your being installed as the Ulu of Wari. And uh, if there is any, if the amount of media attention that you got is any measure, then I dare say that Your Royal Majesty has uh, his work cut out for him. <laughs> because because uh, just watching the videos of the installation and several, you'll find millions all over the world paying attention to what um, was going on here in, in Wari. But I want to say that the reason is because first Your Royal Majesty brings to, uh, to this office and to this stool uh, not just the energy and uh, the far-sightedness uh, of youth, but more importantly, your antecedents in business and your antecedents in innovation and entrepreneurship. So many are looking to see how this will benefit, not just uh, worry, but also our nation. So Your Royal Majesty, I, I hope and pray that uh, working with us, uh, that is the federal government, and we have several initiatives, especially uh, initiatives for entrepreneurship and innovation for young people, not just in, tech, in technology, but also in your area of oil and gas. So there is a lot that we, I hope uh, we will be able to do uh, together. So just to say again to thank you very much, Your Royal Majesty, for the very warm reception. Uh, Your Royal Majesty is a father, but also a brother. And, and that paradox, I think, is what makes uh, this particularly interesting. And as an in-law, I think I might also be able to take advantage of that in-law. I was going to challenge you, you didn't mention that. Just to say thank you very much, Your Royal Majesty, for your courtesies all the time, and also for the very warm reception that you've given us and, and my team since we came. Thank you very much. God bless you. I pray that this, that your, your time in office will not only be known for progress, for prosperity in this kingdom, but it will also be known for safety, for security, and that this land will prosper under your reign, that you will, that you will live long, very, very long, and that you will exceed all your forebears in performance and in the love and respect of your people. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you.